Hey, hey, party people, this video is going to go over all the awesome things I bought in Israel while I was visiting my in-laws. I went to two awesome art stores and a really cool bookstore, and I cannot wait to share all these things that I got with you all. Um, of course, I've not had a chance to try them all out. You know, I'll probably start like including them in my visual playlist videos. But for now, I want to show you guys everything I bought. And uh, yeah, some people were saying like, oh, Zoe, you know, Israel isn't a really great place to shop because it's expensive. But it's like, well, if I find things that A, I've never seen before or B, um, they are super inaccessible where I am, like they don't sell them near me and shipping is really expensive. And, you know, you know how some Amazon listings look hella shady. You're not really sure what you're going to get. <laughs> You know, in those kinds of circumstances, if I see them and they're not ridiculously expensive, I will snap them up, okay? So, here we are. The first thing is this book called Shoes, Pleasure, and Pain. And it's like the universe knew that I was gearing up for my shoe series. So, I'm going to start a shoe vocabulary and how to draw series. And... Um, I'm going to preface that with a how to draw feet video. But this is perfect. Little additional research before I start that series, right? Oh, look at how pretty this book is. Whew, 1990s Nadia Auerman. So I'm going to start with the stuff I bought at Arda. And these three are papers from Windsor and Newton. And yeah, Windsor, I have lots of Windsor Newton gouaches, watercolor markers, lots of stuff. But... I've never tried any of their papers before. And I don't think they sell their papers near me. I, ha I, have, I don't recall seeing them. Uh, so I got this one. This is 140 pound paper, which is my preferred weight. And it's cold press, which means it has a slight texture. It's for the Cotman. It's like the Cotman watercolor paper, and I do have some of these watercolors, so I'm happy to try those out. This is drawing and sketching paper, 140 pound. It has a smooth surface, lack of texture, okay. And I want to try this out for color pencils because, you know, I use Bristol, the Strathmore Bristol. It's not my favorite. Eh. Okay, and this is the Windsor and Newton bleed proof marker paper. I did pick up a few Windsor and Newton pro markers when I was in New York in December, so kind of stoked to try those out. I don't know how to pronounce that, and I'm not going to make an idiot of myself on video, so it's that brand. It's a brand I've never seen before or heard of before. And again, this is watercolor paper. It is 120 pounds, so just a little bit lighter than the 140, not as flimsy as the 90, so I want to give this a shot. And I don't know what texture this is because it's sealed in plastic, but I want to try it out. And then this one is a Potentate brand marker paper. I've never heard this brand before. And, you know, I, I love it when I buy Asian stuff and they have this, like, super fun English. And, you know, Korean stuff, Korean stationery, they have this stuff all the time. And it makes me crazy because I really feel like they're doing it on purpose because I know Koreans who speak flawless English. Hi, me. Hello. Okay. I'm not the only one. And so when they do the stuff like this, <laughs> when Asian people do stuff like this, I'm like, I know you know people who speak flawless English and they could have, you know, edited this. You just like being funny and ridiculous now. This is also that brand that I can't pronounce. So this one is uh, 38 pounds, and this is 20 pound paper, so it's a little bit heavier, but it is made for markers. It says excellent for uh, markers, technical pens, ink, and pen. Can someone explain to me the difference between technical pen and pens? Whatever, anyway. Um, so I am eager to try all these out. I'm excited. Y'all, I got hella markers at Arda. First of all, 
did you know Pantone makes markers? Because I did not, and I found these. Okay, so they're a little bit dirty. The store is not going to win any awards for cleanliness, but it's not a restaurant, so I'm just rolling with it. They're brush tips. They have the fine tip on the bottom. When I buy markers for testing like this, I always buy like from three to five markers in the same color family so that I can try, you know, base color shadow, base color, sh base color shadow, base color shadow, or base color with two values of shadow and play with them together like that. And before I start playing them with other brands of marker. So I bought these three. I bought these four Letraset Flex markers in various shades in the R family, R327, R735, you get the drill. And I'm familiar with Letraset, but I've never seen these before. And it has a chisel and a brush tip, which I love because I never use the fine tips. I also got three greens in the Potentate brand, that marker paper I'd never seen before, also makes markers, funny about that. These are alcohol-based markers, it says right there, three different greens, and these have the chisel tip and the fine tip. I also got these Letraset Aqua Pro markers. They're water-based markers, and I don't know if that means they're just water-based markers, or they're also, um, like watercolor markers where you can just lay down the color and use a water brush and start painting with them and uh so i don't know anything about them i bought them because i i don't know anything about them they have a brush tip and they have a fine tip they're made in england i don't know anything about them i'm excited to try them do do do, -do. and i got some faber cassell art grip aquarelle pencils these are watercolor pencils and these are cheaper than the Faber-Cassell, the Albrecht Durs that I have. And, you know, I'm always trying to find less expensive, but still good quality materials for my students, both here and in class. So I wanted to try these out and I have tried them out a little bit. They are not winning huge awards with me right now, but I do want to play with them some more and see if there's a better way to work with them before I, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down. And then I went to my art. So this is the only paper that I got there. This is a uh, paper, apple, a uh, watercolor paper. And it is 300 grams, which is the 120 or 140 pound equivalent. And it's fairly inexpensive. It's A5 paper, 12 sheets for 14 shekels, which is like give or take four US dollars. And it has a really nice tooth. You see that texture? A little bit different from the other ones. So I wanted to try that one out. Never have seen this brand before. These are from Lyra, a brand I've never heard of. From what I can tell, they're color pencils and they're jumbo. These are different Lyra color pencils. They're Rembrandt poly color. You see, these are more uh, regular pencil size. These are jumbo hexagons with like a really fat lead, which I'm hoping that means they don't break. Because you know me, like I really love the color payout of the Prisma colors, but the fact that they snap, even if you look at them funny, just makes me crazy pants. I, I need to get that sharpener. <sighs> now, these are Karen Dosh Luminance pencils, and I was really excited to find these because I know this brand, and I have one. I have the white, and it is a beautiful white. It works really well, but I've never seen open stock in these pencils. Open stock means you can buy them singularly instead of in sets, and these pencils are <laughs> expensive, <laughs> so I never really felt compelled to go buy a set before because usually the sets I see are not even like a nice 12, but like 24, 48, or whatever. But they had them in open stock at my art, so I just got four. I am so excited to try them out. Yay! Okay. Because, you know, you watch, like, YouTube videos and you hear people talk, and it's always um, Faber-Cassell Polychromos, Caran d'Ache Luminance, and Prismacolor 
kind of taking the top three slots most of the time. And uh, I have Polychromos. I have Prismacolors. I didn't have these. A bunch of you guys uh, have been telling me that I need to try out touch markers. So here's my chance. Ha <laughs> ha! So again, I've never seen touch markers in any stores near me. So I saw these and I was like, uh, I need some. The white ones are have a chisel on one side and a brush tip on the other. And I got these awesome dark browns to test. And then the black ones are chisel on one side and fine tip on the other. And as far as I can tell, that's the only difference. But then I got these kind of orangey brown colors. I'm hoping that this makes a really interesting color family. And then here is a gouache brand that I have never heard of before. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, in English, these uh, long lines mean that it would be pronounced PBO or PBO, but they're made in France, so that means nothing. <laughs> Uh, let me know if you know how to pronounce these correctly. All right. I got a vermilion red, a burnt sienna, and I got this one because burnt sienna is a great base for many skin tones. And vermilion red, just because I wanted something that would mix well with the burnt sienna so I could play around but also be a bright color. But the true test of gouache is always white. Okay, that's how you can tell that a brand is really opaque because, I mean, that's why I use gouache to, you know, to play with the opacity so that I can layer light colors on top of dark colors and, you know, manipulate how much water I use and to create the effects that I want. So if the white is not fully opaque, eh. Okay, so I got the white. I always get the white when I try out a new gouache. One last thing, y'all. This thing. Okay, I've never seen this before. This is um, expensive. That's shekels, not dollars, but that's still expensive. Um, metallic powder color. It is a gouache color. Just spread with wet brush. Do not add water in the bottle. And it is this gorgeous, deep, copperish, rosy, gold color. And I've never seen this before. I've never used this before. And uh, I am so excited to try this out. It came in six different super amazing colors. I'm kind of obsessed with metallics. And I wanted to get them all, but um, <laughs> what is it? 10, 11, 12 US dollars is the exchange. So I decided to just get the one. But let me tell you, if this turns out beautiful, I am going to bribe my sister-in-law into getting the rest of the colors for me, for sure. That's it, y'all. Those are all the things that I bought in Israel that you might be interested in. Hey, hit the like button if you like this video and want to see more haul videos in the future because I love shopping for art supplies and do it as often as I can. <laughs> and uh, share, subscribe, all that beautiful stuff. Go back to practicing, y'all, and I will see you in the next video.